Good evening, girls. Oh, sorry about the mud. Wanted to make sure that Wednesday was settling in. Is this a bad time? I'm Miss Thornhill, your dorm mom. Apologies I wasn't here to greet you when you arrived. I trust Enid has given you the old nevermore welcome. Well, here's a little welcome gift from my conservatory. I try to match the right flower to each of my girls. And when I read your personal statement in your application, I immediately thought of this. Oh, you know it. Okie dokie. Well, before I leave, I want to go over a few house rules. Lights off at 10, no loud music, and no boys. Ever. Passes to Jericho are a privilege, not a right. It's a brisk 25 minute walk, or there's a shuttle on the weekends. The locals are a tad bit wary about Nevermore, so please don't go making any waves or perpetuating any outcast stereotypes. That means keep your claws to yourself and no smothering people in their sleep. Are we clear? Great talk? <laughs> I doubt Wednesday is impressed by your tricks, Mr. Thor. Thrilled to have you join us on our journey into the world of carnivorous plants. Now. Who can tell us the name of this beauty? Very good, Wednesday. Looks like you may have competition for first chair, Bianca. Wednesday, perhaps you can identify the ghost orchid's greatest quality. Thank you, ladies, for those illuminating Don't. insights. Clearly, the plants aren't the only carnivores in class today. You usually find students in here looking for actual books. Most sneak in to make out. Is there something I can help you find? I think it's the symbol to an old student society, um, the nightshade. I was told they disbanded years ago. Sorry. I was very impressed with your answers in class today. Are you and your mother close? I know it can't be easy showing up mid-semester. I've been here a year and a half and I still feel like an outsider. To tell you the truth, I'd never really fit in anywhere. Too odd for the normies, not odd enough for the outcasts. I thought Nevermore would be different, but there's still a handful of teachers who will barely acknowledge me. Never lose that Wednesday. The ability to not let others define you, it's a gift. The most interesting plants grow in the shade. And if you ever need anyone to talk to, the door to the conservatory is always open. Apparently, everyone is off to their assignments, and so far, no incidents. Cool. Not officially, but I see you in here every morning. You're always tucked into that little back booth when I come in for my daily matcha latte. With sweet nectar, many carnivorous varieties turn to sexual trickery, boring the males in. Now, once the plant is pollinated, what do the male insects get in exchange? Okay, okay. I know you're all excited about Saturday, which is why I haven't assigned any homework. I do still need volunteers for the decorating committee. Anyone interested, come and see me up here. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. Welcome to this year's Raven. Oh, beautiful. What a nice top. Have a dance for me. Here's to a night they'll never forget. You were a Nevermore student once. Don't you remember being full of hope and excitement about the Raven? Wednesday's mother? Wednesday Adams. What a lovely surprise. Tyler Galpin, the small town. It's hard to keep secrets. <laughs> Oh my God, is he alive? I just heard what happened to Mayor Walker. Are you all right? I, uh, I can't imagine witnessing something like that. Principal Weems is only looking out for your best interests. You could have been seriously hurt or worse. How goes the novel? Sounds intriguing. I saw this on my bookshelf and thought of you. Mary Shelley wrote it on a dare when she was only 19. Well, I think it's very smart that you're focusing on literary monsters and leaving whatever real ones might be out there to the authorities. No, but she will expel you if you continue to defy her. Always. I think we're a lot alike. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. Enid has requested to room with Yoko for the rest of the school year. When there's a falling out, I like to get both girls' perspectives on what happened. You two seemed as thick as thieves. Deflect all you want, but you and I both know that you care about Enid. And you have to admit, she managed to bring out a spark of warmth in you. Oh, don't worry. Just a tiny spark. Barely perceptible to the average eye, but I noticed. 
part of the dorm experience is making friends with people that you wouldn't normally connect with. And those friendships often turn into lifelong bonds. Is it really so difficult for you to admit that you made a friend and now that she's gone, you might actually miss her? Well, if that's your decision, I'll submit the forms to Principal Weems. Of course. If you need anything, I'll be right down the hall. Wednesday? I thought you'd be halfway to New Jersey by now. Oh, dear. Weems was right. You do need psychiatric help. Can't throw out wild accusations without consequences. Ugh, that's enough. Tyler, honey, make Mama happy and shut her up. Permanently? Tyler will do anything for me. Remember what I told you? I showed you who you really are. What they did to your mother. The outcast made you a monster. They're just pawns in a bigger game. Just like you, Wednesday. Once again, you've underestimated the situation. You were never getting on that train. I sent Tyler to intercept you. My name is Noah. A fitting end, don't you think? I have to admit, that shape-shifting stunt with Weems almost worked. As my father always said, if you want to outsmart an outcast, you gotta outthink him. You know, we have roots that go all the way back to Joseph Crackstone. Joseph Crackstone was a visionary dedicated to protecting normies from outcasts until his life was cut short by your ancestor, Goody Adams. And then to add insult to injury, they stole his land to build that abomination of a school. But throughout the centuries, my family has remained committed to Crackstone's mission. My brother died serving that cause. I decided to take a different approach. The supernatural. The one man who nearly succeeded in eradicating the outcasts. I believe your ancestor, Goody Adams, would disagree. It wasn't enough for Goody to kill Crackstone. She had to curse his soul, too. My dear Wednesday, you are the key. Your arrival at Nevermore set the chubby wheels of my plan in motion. Goody sealed Crackstone in his sarcophagus with a bloodlock. Only one of her direct descendants can own a living descendant on the night of a blood moon. So, I bided my time and I made you feel special until you were ready to be sacrificed. I am of your blood. I have summoned you to rid the world of outcasts once and for all. I might not get to kill all the outcasts, but at least I'll get to kill you, Wednesday.